Hey everybody, Jake here from Client Time Photography, and welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you guys are all doing good. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about the 01 to 03 Rough Country 5-inch lift kit. So, for starters, no, I do not have any affiliation with them. I'm doing a review strictly on this kit just because I've been running it for three years. I want to pass along information, especially to anybody that's thinking about off-roading one of these F-150s, you know, doing off-road bills or overland builds or anything like that. I want you guys to have as much information as possible. So that's why a major reason why I'm doing this video. Um, it's been a great kit. We're going to talk about a bunch of stuff, some probably some modifications you might want to make if you're using this kit specifically. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the price. Uh, we're going to view it, review it all together here right now, and uh, hopefully you guys are going to enjoy the info. So let's do it. So First thing I'm going to talk about is how this kit works. It basically brings a lot of this equipment and a lot of the suspension and stuff like that and brings it down. It also is the way the kit's designed is to bring down your torsion bars on two individual brackets where the torsion bars hang low right about right here, which is not a problem if you're using this lift kit and you're mostly on road. But if you're off roading, it is a problem because these brackets hang down low and the first time I started using this kit I was hitting all kinds of stuff because the brackets hang down lower. Now there is a fix for this. As you can see my, with my 5 inch Rough Country lift kit my torsion bars are right back up here into the frame where they need to be so that way I don't get caught up on them and I'll show you the fix right here. Alright so this is the fix right here. These guys are the Realist, they're made by a company called Realist. Basically what they are called is torsion bar relocators. And the way they work is exactly as the name suggests, they relocate the torsion bars. And I'll provide you with, a, here's a little view of their website. Here's the options of like the locators. You can give them for the uh, five inch rough country lift, the four inch rough country lift. And then that's generally like your way of fixing that problem. They mount into your lower control arm, lift up, put the torsion bars back up here into the frame and basically get rid of that whole problem of your torsion bars hanging too low and the brackets and everything like that. So if you are planning on running this kit and you're planning on off-roading, that's a way that you can uh, kind of do it. Next up, we come to the front of the truck, right? So again, how is this kit design. It basically is designed to bring your transfer case down, you bring your lower control arms down to these brackets right here. This bracket system holds the transfer case. You have your skid plate here. You have another transfer case plate right here. And that's essentially how it works. And then you also have larger spindles. Now the problem that I have had is you notice the clearance right here. I'm not sure but I am pretty sure if you were to run uh, this same exact truck with on 32 inch tires, because I know I could run 32 inch tires um, with this truck stock 4x4, you would actually have more clearance here stock than you would with this lift kit. And for someone who's off-roading, that's huge. Yes, you might have... With this lift kit, you might have more side clearance in the back, but this is the clearance that you really need to worry about more than anything. This is where you are driving over stuff, you're driving over rocks. You need to have good clearance here. As you can see with this skid plate that I have right here, I beat the absolute crap out of it because literally, I think I measured, I think I only have about 10 inches right here, which is not a lot. So, and you account for the amount of uh, weight that this truck has, it's just going to beat up this whole area right here. So, that's probably one of the major cons about this lift kit, I would say, is that it hangs down really low. But again, this is a lift kit. You get what you pay for. All right. So, another element we're going to talk about is, again, this lift kit, the way it's designed is to bring your truck up to make it taller, right? Now, this kind may or may not break this kit for you because something you may not realize that this does is this also raises your center of gravity. And specifically with us, with Overlanders, if you look up top here, we have a lot of equipment, a lot of our gear is stored up top. So when you have that extra weight up top, you can get 
and uh, these trucks specifically, a lot of wobble. Sometimes in solid axle vehicles, it's called death wobble. Now, I bring this up because this directly ties into our Rough Country kit. The Rough Country kit comes with Rough Country 2.0 shocks in the front and Rough Country 2.0s in the rear. Now, when I installed this kit, I actually already had Deaver release springs in the rear, and I had, I want to say, Bilstein shock, no, Rancho shocks in the front. As soon as I put this kit on, this truck was not safe to drive on the highway. I started getting death wobble with the factory, uh, the, the shocks that came with it, the Rough Country 2.0 shocks. Now, that's partially uh, my fault because I should have taken into consideration the fact that I have a heavier vehicle, it's also taller, and I have more weight up top than this vehicle would normally have. So that was on me. So a fix for that and what I did personally was here, and I'll show you. So for a fix for this, what we went ahead and did was I went to a local company and they put in shock hoops. Uh, we put in a Fox 2.5 with a remote reservoirs. I don't remember how long of shocks we, uh, we ended up doing, but that was uh, one way of doing it. The other thing that because we did that, um, in order to, to be able for the tire to clear these shock hoops, I had to do a, uh, I think it was a two inch spacer. The problem with the two inch spacers is I go through uh, wheel hubs a lot. I think I change out my wheel hubs probably every, probably consistently about every three years with the amount of off-roading I do, which that, and that is with a 32 inch tire. That's not even with a 35. So that is something else to think about. Uh, if you decide to go this route, which we're going to talk about later. Uh, the other thing I did was uh, BTF make some uh, upper control arms with uniballs. I was also burning through. I found out I was seemed to be going through uh, upper control arms quite a bit. So I went to BTF. They're a local company here in California, and they make upper control arms. So I went ahead and got those. And then thus far, I have not had any problems with my upper control arms. All right. So let's kind of put all the variables and elements, basically everything we talked about, kind of just put it together. Another factor that comes along with any kit is the price. So this currently I think is about a thousand dollars for this lift kit plus shipping you're probably looking around twelve hundred thirteen hundred dollars. Now personally I don't think I would use this kit for my vehicle if I could do it again and here's why. Uh, I do believe and you'd have to do your own research on this but again, the front clearance is a huge thing, especially with us with off-roading and everything like that. Um, the second thing is, is I'm running 32 inch tires, the same tires I was running before. And yes, I could run 35s with this kit, but then I'm killing my gas mileage. So really, I didn't really gain too much. Um, the ability to control the weight is another factor. I had to upgrade my shocks just to be able to control the weight because of how this lift kit works. I'm pretty sure if I would have just stuck with the truck being stock and not changed a whole lot that I probably could have just upgraded the shocks to maybe some 2.5s or something like that and it would have been able to control the weight. Fortunately now, I made the mistake. Again, this is why I do these videos is so that you guys can learn from my mistakes. I built the truck around a lift kit as opposed to looking at other options and trying to figure out something that would work. So now as it sits, um, this truck can really only work for this lift kit because I did shock hoops. I did specific length of shocks specifically for this size of lift kit and everything like that. Now I'm kind of unfortunately stuck with this until I can figure out another option. So. Talking about options, what are some other options that you can do? Yes, Camberg makes a uh, four-wheel drive lawn travel kit. Uh, I think the last time I looked at it, it was like six grand. Uh, H&M, I think, makes a lawn travel kit for this truck, which you can do. Those were some more viable options that I personally would probably look at, but for me specifically, I don't think I would do even those. And here's another reason. Um, I do overlanding. I Typically, we do a lot of highway miles, and um, yes, we do some off-roading, but we don't do any super hardcore off-roading. Um, again, some of the trails that we go off of, like lawn travel kits I see specifically are really good for, you know, 
wide open deserts where you're just going fast as you can at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, pushing your truck to the limit. I don't want to do that with this truck. I don't want to be pushing it to the limit because at the end of the day, we still have to camp out of this. And on top of that, when you have a long travel kit like that, they are super wide. If you've seen free runners or any of the trucks around town that are super wide, you go up to some of the trails up in northern Washington, Oregon, you're not going to be able to fit that truck on most of the trails. So that's going to limit the, the places that you can go. And I do not want to be limited where I can go because some of the best campsites we've ever found have been in just some not hard trails, but they're just narrow, which even this as it is now can barely fit on it. So I don't want to limit myself as far as my long travel in that route. So take it for me. This might me personally talking is, uh, if you're going to look at a lift kit, look at those, think about those considerations and just some things to think about. Um, me personally, if I could do it again and I'm looking at options of how I'm going to do it, I would have someone do like a custom mid travel kit and build it specifically for this truck. Get rid of the torsion bars, um, probably custom upper, upper and lower control arms, um, switch over to coil over shocks and then from there and then you'd obviously would have to extend the axles and mess around with the steering a little bit but that i think would be a perfect kit for this truck because it would give you a lot more suspension a lot more travel a lot more comfort but it'd still keep your truck just kind of nice and tighter as opposed to just having that super long travel stance but in any case hopefully you guys enjoyed the review of the kit if you guys ever have any questions of course you can always send me a comment and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching